Hey, what's going on guys? So, I uh, finally got my replacement uh, bed extender uh, for my broken one since the uh, the accident there with the kayak and uh, finally getting a chance to put it together. So I'm going to talk about what I like and what I don't like about this one. It is the Boondocks T-Bone, the groovy bed extender. A um, couple different components, uh, a lot more parts than the old T-Bone. So we're going to go over how... Uh, installation was and or assembly and uh, my initial thoughts on it. I haven't had a chance to take it out yet but I'll let you know what I think. So I was finally able to get a hold of a new bed extender, uh, courtesy of Headwaters. And I had the option to go with the same T-bone that I had previously been using. Same model, just a new one. Uh, it's not all bent up and broken stuff. Or I had the option to try the new Groovy T-bone. And I decided to go ahead and try the new Groovy. Uh, now Headwaters did offer to... Assemble that for me, but I wanted to do it at home because, you know, uh, from my experience with my <clears throat> previous T-Bone, it was pretty simple. It took like maybe five minutes to set it up. Uh, that is not going to be the case for this one. There are a lot more parts. There's a lot more assembly involved with the Groovy. So the box is nice and slim. You know, it's nicely packed. Uh, initially, I thought there's a there's a plastic extender instead of, or there's a plastic piece. So instead of the foam pads that the older T-Bone model has. Uh, the new one has a plastic piece that sits on top of one of the grooves and that protects the uh, the groovy section from uh, damage from whatever you're loading. We'll assume that it's a kayak. And it also protects whatever you're hauling from any scraping on that metal piece. Now initially I thought that my kit was missing it. However, that plastic cover is tucked inside of the crossbar. So if you get one of these and you go to assemble it and you think that you're missing a piece, you're probably not. It's just tucked inside the crossbar. Now there is some measuring that you're going to have to do um, because the crossbar attaches um, with the use of the grooves. And obviously in order to do that, you're going to have to <clears throat> make sure that the, um, <clears throat> the T-bone section is centered on the crossbar. So um, the instructions are okay at best. Uh, they do say that it's supposed to be 21 inches on each side for dead center on the crossbar, but I'll tell you right now that it's supposed to be 21 and a quarter. Some things that I like about this new model, the Groovy, uh, I like the finish a lot better on, on the extender portion. It's a powder coated finish. It feels a lot more durable than uh, the older T-Bone, where that one was uh, susceptible to chipping and flaking on the paint uh, a lot easier than what I think this one's going to be. The extender portion is uh, is not a smooth, round uh, uh, shape like the old extender, like the old T-Bone extender. This one has a little bit, of, a little bit more of a bend uh, and a sharper upward angle. I think it does kind of limit you a little bit more on extending, uh, going with the, uh, the longer uh, extension adjustment on, on the Groovy because then you're going to, I mean, you run into issues, the extender being higher than the truck bed uh, when you go out to those longer extension points. Now, I'm, I'm right in the middle, so it's not really going to affect me too much. Um, but with the old one, I think you could get a little bit more length on the the bed extender without running into that issue of the extender being higher than the bed of your truck. Some things that I didn't like about the assembly, um, all the uh, all the nuts and bolts and everything, uh, they're all packaged in just in one bag, and uh, they're not really separated into specific pouches and that kind of, you know, goes along with the instructions just being okay. Now, it's not too hard to figure out what you need and, and where it goes, um, <clears throat> but the pictures are kind of vague, a uh, little blurry, and, you know, the instructions are, like I said, they're just okay. 
Uh, so anyone who's, you know, has a slightest idea of what they're doing should be able to do this without too much difficulty. During the assembly, one of the things that I found irritating was with the order of the assembly. You have two brackets that slide, okay, so you have two brackets that slide on to the crossbar and they hold the centerpiece and uh, you run two longer bolts through there. Now the problem with that is um, the lower portion of those longer, the, the lower, the lower bolt out of those longer two, if you tighten those up first, if you're following the order of the instructions, you're going to have a hard time once you center um, that bracket in the middle of the crossbar and you get your measurements done and everything's uh, dead center. You're not going to be able to tighten one of your bottom bolts because uh, there's just, there's no clearance. That's one thing that you need to be aware of is when you are bolting the brackets to the centerpiece, um, I would just do the top portion. I would leave the bottom portion out. And then once you get your, your dead center, uh, tighten up your bottom screws that hold the brackets into the crossbar and then go back and you hit that bottom bolt last. Now, one thing I don't like about the guide posts at the, each end of the crossbar is with this new model, you lose that uh, that loop or you lose that hole in the guides where you could run a, a strap or a bungee or something like that. And that's something that I used a lot on the old bed extender, the old T-bone is I just ran my straps through that hole. And that's how I held uh, the back end down to the T-bone. Now you don't have that option with this new one. They took that away from you. And there's not too much functionality for those posts, honestly. Uh, they claim that it's for, you know, helping guide the kayak on and off the bed extender. But really there's, I mean, you, you almost have to cut that plastic protector piece and bring those posts in in order for them to have any function at all, because otherwise they're just, they're there. They do give you the option to Loctite some of these, uh, some of these bolts into uh into place and you know with the amount of the amount of things that you had to assemble to get this thing together um and with you know vibration on the road and 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 miles and loading and unloading i definitely will will say that you probably should put some loctite on the on all these areas because i can definitely see uh the potential for this new groovy t-bone to fail from um from screws and from bolts backing out. And then last but least, obviously there's a price difference between the older model of the T-Bone and the new one, the Groovy. Um, on Amazon, the old one retails at just over 200 bucks. And this new Groovy one retails at right around $240. So, do I think that, that uh, some of these new features, I mean, obviously you have the grooves where you can do attachments and some other things like that. They made uh, a couple adjustments with powder coating the uh, the paint and and some, some small things like that. You have some versatility with you know bringing those those guide posts in or or whatever you want to do. Um, however, do I think all that stuff is worth an extra forty dollars? Um, no, I think the original did just fine. Uh, the only knock that I had on the original is the foam pads that uh, protect your kayak from scraping on the metal. The original crossbar um, were flimsy and they would fall apart quickly and you would have to tape them uh, together to keep them on there. So do I think um, that's a, you know, do I think that's an absolute deal breaker and it's, you know, go get 40, go spend an extra 40 bucks on the groovy? No, I think... Um, I think the original T-Bone is going to be a better value. I think it's going to hold up a lot longer in the long run. Um, as far as, you know, maintenance, there's a lot less things that can go wrong on it. Uh, you don't have to be constantly checking uh, all these bolts. Do I regret getting the Groovy? Uh, I don't know yet because I haven't had a chance to do it. I just have assembled it and I'm doing an initial impression based off of uh, assembly and installation but I can tell you right off the top of my head that uh, the original T-bone was way 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 easier to put together and there's a lot less things that can back out and fail on it um, so it's gonna be a personal preference what you guys think you want but personally off of initial impressions 
uh, I don't think that it's worth the extra 40 bucks because you're not getting all that much. If anything, you actually lost something because those guides uh, on the end don't do anything anymore. I'll probably give you an update after I've uh, taken some trips. I'll uh, definitely have to check some bolts and some some areas where there are fasteners and see how they're holding up. Uh, but I don't have any doubts that this thing is probably going to have, you know, once once we get some road vibration on it, it's probably going to have some stuff start backing out. So we're going to have to get some Loctite and secure it in. Anyways, guys, thanks for uh, watching that. It's a quick little assembly and my, I'm not going to say a review, but my initial impressions on the uh, the Boondocks Groovy T-Bone Bed Extender. Uh, if I have any uh, issues come up with this, I'll certainly let, let you guys know in future videos. But thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.